Hey YouTubers, this is Camera Prepper here. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, what is a prepper and why is it important. Uh, I've had a question from one of my subscribers, excuse me, about why, how we can persuade um, a family member or a friend to start prepping and um, why it is important. So I've uh, st sticking on a video so that um, any non-preppers out there can um, view this and hopefully I can persuade um, a few to sort of um, start prepping. It's also to um, call out to all preppers out there, um, urban homesteaders, survivalists as well, to say, give your opinion on why prepping is important. Again, this is my opinion, This is um, so I would like to hear um, why do you think it's important as well so that we can persuade people to start prepping. First off, um, I want to say what is prepping um, and obviously go on from there. Uh, so for the people that haven't prepped or don't know what that prepping is, know what it is, if that makes sense. So prepping, um, you've probably seen it um, and on TV quite a lot um, in the, literally in the last few years. Uh, prepping has been around for quite a while but um, you've probably seen it on um, things like our, the worst ch uh, doomsday channels, doomsday channels, doomsday preppers, I should say. Thank you. Um, uh, obviously, <clears throat> some people that are on there um, are um, a bit extraordinary. Uh, they're not the uh, per se the normal what um, normal preppers are. Um, I would, uh, some of them are brilliant. Um, I've met a few of them. And they're fantastic guys. Um, obviously, there is there is some out there that are a bit, um, a bit extraordinary. They take things a bit too out, out of this world. Um, but most preppers are normal. We're uh, nine to five jobs. Um, we've got family. Um, we've got all got the same problems. And some of us has got uh, disabilities. Um, you know, I've got. I have to plan for that, and um, my wife's got disabilities, um, so you know that will come. So everybody's got some type of problem in their life, um, so we're all the same people. We, you know, we're very much um, uh, believe in the community, uh, but a prepper is someone that sees the outside world or the world that we live in very differently to people that feel secured. Um, we 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 prepare for man-made or uh, mother nature disasters whether it be small or big um, we don't believe that uh, the government officials or emergency services will come to us um, straight away pure reason that if a disaster was to strike um, they would be so very busy um, trying to respond to emergency calls that you know it could be hours and um, if not days which has been proven um, during the floods that happened a couple of years ago. So we prepare, f we have a, a safe net or security net so that if something does happen we can live for a certain period of time comfortably. I wouldn't say you know we'll be you know having a feast or a party or anything like that. It's, it's obviously in a, in a disaster situation or, or a situation where our life changes a little bit, even if it's only for a couple of days. Um, you know, we will be in a reasonable, comfortable position so that we can, you know, get through that situation, whatever situation it is. Most preppers um, prepare even for the smallest things. Yes, we do prepare for major disasters, uh, instance asteroid strikes and uh, World War Three. Yes, we admit that we do prepare for these disasters, um, but we also prepare for the smallest ones as well. And this is what I'm trying to reach to the non-preppers out there to start doing. Is th things like job losses, um, injuries, which is forces you to, to leave work or any situation like that. Uh, minor floodings, um, not major floodings, but minor floodings. Um, things like this, you know, will start you off your journey into prepping and hopefully this video will, will obviously will try and persuade you um, prepping has been around for like I said at the beginning of the video prepping has been around for for 
probably, I would say, at the beginning of human existence on this earth. And it's going back quite a while, um, way before our time, obviously. And I'm not that old. Um, but it, from the, the precepts of the caveman and the Neanderthals, um, they used to prepare their food or store their food throughout the, throughout the summer so they can survive throughout the winter so that their family and their friends could survive. Um, even obviously you're thinking, oh that was you know, 10, 15, whatever thousand years ago, you know, why does it concern us now? Well, World War II, I'll bring you a little bit closer. World War II, um, our grandparents were preparing, obviously at the time was obviously the war, they had to grow their own food, they had to store their own food throughout this time just for pure reason that they were on rations. Now at that time obviously if, if you study history during that time and um, our sort of our grandparents were uh, had to go on rationing so that they were given certain you know a small amount of food that uh, the government seemed that they could survive throughout the week um, for sometimes it, they had a small bit of, um, for instance, a um, small bit of butter that would last, uh, had to last for a, you know, for a week, or a small bit of meat that would had to last for a week. So that they were, they were encouraged, even by the government, uh, America, even by the government, to prepare to grow their own food so that they can feed themselves. So that was only 70 odd years ago. Now, again, obviously that was 70 odd years ago. The reason why prepping has sort of gone to the back of the people's heads now is that because we're so dependent on other people to provide for us. So for instance, we are dependent on the supermarkets, the local super, the supermarkets like the Asda's, the Tesco's, the Lidl's, the Aldi's, you know, the list goes on, to provide that food on a on a 24 hour basis so that if we're out of stock we can just literally go down to the supermarket and buy that food or we depend on the electrical company to provide us electricity and heat uh, and gas company obviously for, for heat we get so dependent on electronics and computers and everything like this now that we feel so secure in our house that you know, we feel that nothing, we, nothing can happen to us. Now, one of the questions, obviously, sorry, I'm struggling. One of the questions is obviously the supermarket. Now we've had it done. You know, uh, our local supermarket um, had a power cut. The power cut was out for 48 hours. Now they they weren't um, obviously selling any food or anything like that. Now, if it's the only place that you can buy food and your short supply for those two days you have no food you know just think of that question how obviously you're going to provide for those two to feed yourself for those two days this smallest things you know things like um, uh, again very common um, gas company um, doing repairs or gas mains blue You've got no heating now, unless obviously you're an electric but you've got no heating or no means of cooking food for the next, you know, how long it takes them to repair it. Um, we've been, obviously, I've known where my area, that the gas company, it took them five, six days, excuse me, to, to uh, repair the damaged main. Now five or six days, obviously, you have to find other means of cooking. So. Preparing for the tiniest things is, is really important. Um, we're not saying to start off something big, like again, like the astral strike, but something so small um, is very, very important. I'd like to give you a question, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just for obviously for preppers and for non preppers to answer below. Um, and, and obviously also to ask why it's important, but but this question is this, I'm, go and I'll, I'm going to give you my response and I would like to hear your response as well. Uh, my question is this, um, it's a, you're on a full-time job, okay, you're on a full-time job, so whatever job it may be, full-time job, you're earning um, above average wage, um, say 35, 40,000 pound a year, 
No, that thirty-five thousand, thirty-five, forty thousand pound a year job, you're dependent on. So you're dependent on in terms of you are paying your bit, you're paying your bills, you're paying your mortgage, you're, you know, you're putting food on the table for your family and for your kids. And then all of a sudden, uh, say a week later, uh, your manager comes up to you and says this. And touch wood, I pray that it never happens to anybody. Um, that you are um, relieved of your duties, you've been made redundant or you're fired. Now, that when you hear that for the first time, you are you're shocked by it, um, you are distraught, and you start to think, how how am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to put food on the table? It's one of the Big, even though it's even though it's in terms of disasters or survival situations, it's, it's, it's at the smallest sort of end scale. But it, at that time, it, it could be the worst disaster that you've ever faced in your life. You know how you're going to pay these and how you're going to put food on the table, not just for you but for your family and for your children. But there is a positive end of the tunnel. If you start prepping now, if you even buy one can of, say for instance, uh, baked beans a week, or you buy one can of something that you enjoy per week, so it's this one can, eventually you'll grow a, a supply for you know, a week, and then eventually up to four weeks, and then so forth and so forth. So that if something happens, and you've got food to put on your table, and then something that, you know, for, for in terms of what the situation is, um, there'll be your your life will be more comfortable, be less stress free, so that you'll be able to spend more time looking for another job. Um, things like as well, uh, I know money is money is tight, um, and I, I know that because money is tight for me as well. But even putting you know five pound uh, a month, uh, five pound or even you can five ten pound a week, you know putting that away for as they say for a rainy day is it can be survival. It can be, it can get you out of nasty situations. So that's obviously my response and is that I feel that preparing for the smallest is preparing for the worst as well. Um, I'm not asking preppers, uh, non-preppers I should say, to prepare for the major catastrophes, but prepare for job loss, prepare for minor floods, prepare for a minor blackout, prepare for a gas leak. You know, if you prepare for these small things, you'll find that even the major catastrophes, you've prepared for the smallest things. So, God forbid if if I'm hoping that the major catastrophes never happen. Um, but obviously there is a prepper phrase, and if, obviously hopefully I'll get it right. But there is a prepper phrase that it's better to have it and not need it. And not have it, and then need it. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Um, for instance, like car insurance. Same principle. You know, you you have to have it. I know, but but you don't. Um, you don't really need it unless you have a car accident. But we get it anyway, just in case. We also get home contents insurance, uh, home insurance in case. And again, touch wood. Uh, there's a fire or a burglary in the house um, but we don't really we don't need it but we, it's there in case something happens so it's we might as well you know you might as well why you've got them you might as well prepare for you know for a small thing you know with the current climate with the recession you know I know a lot of people saying that you know we're slowly coming back out um, but if you if that's what the government says. But if you if you look on the you know if you look on my street and you know you can safely see that people are still struggling. You know people are losing their jobs by the day, and so it's 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 time for non-preppers to to start prepping and to start think about it. And I'm always here to ask questions to non-preppers and preppers alike. And it's and I'm asking all preppers. Um, if you can, obviously, I understand that um, some preppers like to to keep 
quiet for certain reasons, which I completely understand um, because I've I've done that in the past. Um, but I, I ask that you, you know, at least reach out to your family um, and your friends um, and start talking about prepping. You don't necessarily have to start talking to the community um, for pure reason until you're ready. Um, I'm doing that, obviously. I am reaching out to the whole world through YouTube, which is, you know, this is my way of reaching out to the community. Um, I've already had people in my community come up to me, um, which is a shock because they're watching these, which is, you know, puts a smile on the face and it's magical. So I'm really happy for what I'm doing. Um, but I ask that non preppers, please watch this video. Please start to, you know, research prepping um, and look for channels that are, you know, have uh, mild views, I should say, and uh, not views that are out of the extraordinary. Okay, there is some channels out there, I will agree, that they do, um, as they say, go over the top about it. But it's, you don't have to. You don't have to go mental. You don't have to. You know, do these and stuff. It's this one bit at a time. Well, I hope I've and hopefully I've persuaded people to start prepping. Um, it's one of those you know touchy subjects and tough subjects to talk about. Uh, for pure reason, it's it's like persuading. Sometimes it's like persuading. Um, how can I say? Uh, someone that's really because uh, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Actually, um, for instance. The reason why I'm trying to do this is because my family were like this as well. I started it, you know, a few, five, six years ago. Um, and I started on my own terms um, to protect my family. They thought I was wacky, they thought I was strange, they thought I was crazy. Uh, especially my dad, <laughs> he thought I was a bit mental. You know, no, nothing like this will happen or things like that. But gradually, gradually, as I'm starting to talk to him and the outside world, was you know there's problems are happening around the world you know he start they started to realize you know it's not it's quite smart to do what I'm doing so they at this point in time they are apart from my my immediate family like my wife and my kids uh, my wife and kids have on my side now even my wife is brilliant and, and I love her to bits she she started to talk about it now, you know, we need this, we need that. And it's like, wow, I love you even more. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, please, I asked you to start prepping. And I'm sorry if obviously this video has gone on for ages. Um, it's one of those subjects I love to talk about. Um, again, please like and subscribe below. If you have, please put, in, for preppers and non-preppers, please put comments below on why you think prepping is important. And if any non-preppers have any questions, again, please put it below so that all the preppers out there can, can respond to you and answer your question. It's time to start. This, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, please like and subscribe. Until then, this is Camo Prepper out.